My name is Will Green, um, and I am a research associate at Perry Institute for Marine Science. The main thing that I do is actually photogrammetry, and what photogrammetry is, is taking photos of objects or a scene or a landscape and then using computer software to find overlapping points between photos and then stitch them together into a map or a 3D model of whatever you're looking at. And so for coral research, this is extremely useful because it allows us to build these 3D models uh, and actually two-dimensional maps of whole areas of coral reef that we can use to monitor their health over time. I grew up on Mount Desert Island off the coast of Maine. Um, it's where Acadia National Park is, and so I spent my whole childhood exploring the national park. And both of my parents were very outdoorsy. My dad was a botanist at College of the Atlantic. Uh, he passed away when I was six, but when I was really little I have all of these memories of hiking with him in the park and learning all the different plants and animals that, that live there. Um, and my mom's a calculus teacher at our high school. I had her twice. And she, all through my childhood, took me out in the park to go bird watching and, you know, look at spring wildflowers and any number of other things. So I really grew up immersed in the natural world. Um, and I feel like that's a huge part of who I am and what I care about because that's what I know and love. I became interested in photography, actually, after I became interested in diving. So when I was 10 years old, uh, Patty had just changed the minimum age to become certified for scuba diving. And so we have a friend who is a scuba instructor who lives on the same island I grew up on, and he thought it would be hilarious if for my 10th birthday he gave me a scuba certification to be one of the first people certified at age 10 once it was legal. I was interested in being able to take the things that I see underwater and bring them to the surface. And so. Uh, my mom had a little point-and-shoot camera and she bought a housing for it. Um, and so I actually got started with photography underwater, which is kind of funny because then I got more and more interested in photography. Um, my grandfather was a photographer uh, as his, one of his hobbies and so I, you know, when I was a kid I loved nerding out about camera stuff with him and got really interested in terrestrial photography and landscape photography mostly, um, and time lapse. And then it wasn't until college, actually, that I started working with Perry Institute um, after I took this coral ecology class at Middlebury and met our executive director, Craig Dahlgren. Um, I talked to him about photography and this GIS stuff that he was interested in and 3D modeling of coral reefs. And I happened, because I'm a GIS nerd, to know, the, know how to use the program that he was getting into and starting to use to monitor coral reefs. And then it all sort of came together. It, you know, I take the camera underwater and do moving time lapses of coral reefs, use GIS software to stitch everything together, uh, and I get to scuba dive all at the same time. So it's, it's kind of crazy. It's all of my passions aligned into one really cool job. <laughs> Photogrammetry as a practice is pretty much as old as photography itself. The principle is, is really simple. It's just two photos of the same thing. It's like how our eyes use binocular vision. You can perceive depth from that. Um, and so when I'm underwater, I'm using, it doesn't even really matter what kind of camera, but generally a really high resolution, nice DSLR in an underwater housing. And then I swim in a lawnmower pattern over a reef a whole bunch of times so that I collect thousands of overlapping photos in a grid pattern and then go back across it in the other direction. And in the past, photogrammetry has sort of just been used for two photos at a time, finding overlapping objects, and then you can look at them through special glasses and perceive the depth in it. But with advances in recent technology and computing power, you can now do it over thousands of photos and you can let the computer find overlapping objects in all of them and then recreate the 3D structure of an entire scene. Underwater we can do this on a really really fine scale so you can see in the context of the whole coral reef this whole landscape but then you can also zoom in and look at the fine details of a single coral polyp. Um, 
and that that allows us to to monitor changes on a level that we were just not able to before. We have just purchased a really, really fancy high-tech drone that can carry a, a pretty heavy payload. It can actually carry like five pounds of weight on it. For us, this is for a different kind of photogrammetry. It's for aerial photogrammetry. And so, you know, when I'm underwater, I'm swimming, I'm holding the camera, going back and forth, but as technology advances, we've realized that drones can actually do this a heck of a lot more efficiently and accurately than I can. And so the drone is sort of the, the diver of the sky. It flies in a grid pattern, it takes photos straight down, and then you use the exact same computer program and processing technology to recreate a 3D model of a whole landscape, but on a much bigger scale. So instead of a half millimeter per pixel, with drones, you're looking at somewhere around a centimeter or up to 10 centimeters per pixel, depending on how high you fly. Given that coral reefs are this critically endangered ecosystem globally, um, being able to actually see on a really fine scale how they respond to environmental changes over time is really important and is an amazing tool to let us figure out you know, exactly what's changing on the reef over time in response to you know, whether it's a hurricane or a really warm bleaching event that causes the coral to die off or disease, any of those things we can actually use these underwater 3D models to track. I, I see it as I'm sort of taking what's there and creating forever a virtual model of exactly what it looked like. You know, who knows what research questions we might be able to answer with these data sets. You can zoom around them on your computer, you can look at anything, you can measure things to really, really high levels of precision. You know, we don't know what reefs are going to look like in the future, but if I can create 3D models of them right now, then we're able to compare in the future for whatever changes.